If there was ever any doubt about human beings having descended from apes, look no further than this man's face, Yevgeny Prigozhin, who recently attempted a mutiny in Moscow on Putin's military. From his humble beginnings as a hot dog vendor to later becoming Putin's personal chef, and arguably his private butcher, Prigozhin ultimately became the head of one of Putin's private mercenary armies, the Wagner Group. And they have been fighting on behalf of the Kremlin in Ukraine, usually under the guise of deniable plausibility, all the while being funded by the Russian people's taxes and GDP, whether they like it or not. This way the Kremlin, through the Wagner Group, could commit some of the most cruel and horrendous crimes on behalf of Putin, without Putin or the Kremlin being held directly accountable as far as the United Nations and the feckless Geneva Conventions are concerned. And the Wagner Group have also engaged in mercenary missions within Syria and countries in Africa such as Mali, where they have terrorized citizens through murder and rape, all the while looting the nation's resources with the blessings of Mali's own government. And that's why my referring to Prigozhin's face as being proof of our species descending from apes and him quite possibly being the missing link himself is not necessarily a cheap shot about his looks. It's more of a dark stab at humor regarding his mercenary tactics that have involved using sledgehammers to kill not just enemy combatants, but his own Russian soldiers accused of deserting or retreating. The level of shock violence employed by Prigozhin and the Wagner Group, where they have even supposedly sent a bloodied sledgehammer to the United Nations, are a grim reminder of just how far certain people within our species will go when it comes to acquiring as much wealth and power as they can consume. But just the very face of Prigozhin seems to exude violence and terror. And it's not just because he looks like the vampire villain Nosferatu from the 1922 black and white horror film but because his face and his hardened expression could be the textbook definition of a henchman. This is what true psychopath brutes look like. And as insulting or as judgmental as that may sound, it needs to be pointed out that this man is not simply evil. Sure, evil is a useful word, but it unfortunately makes too many people think in terms of some weird spiritual battle going on between demons and angels that do not exist, where justice will only be served after we die by a supreme being in some fairy tale heaven in the sky. That's not how reality works. The Prigozhins of the world prove there is no God up in the skies meeting out justice on their own creation. When it comes to any of the thousands of gods, plural, that humans have invented and forgotten since recorded history, Someone like Yevgeny Prigozhin proves that all gods are simply figments of our imagination as we try to make sense of the world around us, particularly monstrous brutes like him that can overpower and kill most people. And that's how reality actually works, unfortunately. And yet despite that being the way reality works, that's not an inevitable, immutable law of nature. It's not like we have to be dominated by these people or continue living under the negative consequences of them. If there is an unchangeable law of nature, is that people like Prigozhin will only be stopped with a force greater than their own. Which is why Prigozhin stopped his mutiny and retreated when he realized that not only will he be crushed by the Kremlin, but that even if he did overtake the Kremlin, then what? It's not like he could just rule Russia from that point on. It's not like he was going to be handed over the nuclear codes that have been allowing Putin to hold the world hostage as he continues to terrorize his neighboring countries. That's not how power actually works. And this is something that more people should understand. We all have the power to live our lives as we see fit. But that power requires a level of willingness to overpower those who want to keep you from living your life as you see fit. And Putin certainly seems to understand that, especially when it comes to dealing with the Prigozhins around him. Putin knows you're not going to reason with people like these, you're not going to change their hearts and minds, and you're not going to rehabilitate them either. But most importantly, you're not going to bring back all the dead people they've killed along the way. That's why we need the death penalty for people like these. Just like their victims will never get a second chance, they don't deserve them either. But of course, someone like Prigozhin will not be answering to an international court of justice. 
he'll be dealt with Putin and the Kremlin, and I wonder if it's just a matter of time until we read in the news that he slipped on a banana peel off a 50-story balcony. And this is why Putin continues to remain in power, and why so much of the civilized world watches him do so in horror like a domesticated, neutered house dog. Again, this is why we need the death penalty, and why sometimes you have to fight for peace. For a man who is responsible for the deaths of thousands of innocent human beings, some of which have been his own countrymen, killed by a sledgehammer to the head, any form of capital punishment is actually too kind for a person like Prigozhin. And I'm not suggesting we conjure up the cruelest forms of torture for someone like him, and especially for someone like Vladimir Putin and his inner circle of fellow psychopaths in power. But we most certainly can't keep giving people like these the benefit of the doubt of that, hey, who are we to judge? After all, even Adolf Hitler thought he was doing the right thing for his quote-unquote people. We can't keep employing false equivalences thanks to pseudo-intellectual moral relativism to justify the Putins and Prigozhin's murderous actions on innocent people throughout the world the way so many academics and supposed intellectuals have been doing when it comes to blaming the invasion of Ukraine on NATO and the West and not on a hyper-selfish, murderous regime like Putin's and everyone else that makes up that conclave of undeserved power. And yet, for all my disgust of this man and everything he has done and what he represents, and the fools who either glorify him or justify his actions, I found his face to be an amusing portrait to draw, <laughs> particularly his eyes, that have probably seen so much death and misery, most of which is thanks to the brain they're attached to, as its subconscious tries to survive some of the most inhospitable environments it has found itself living in thanks to the randomness of existence. I really wish more people would inform themselves about how reality actually works, instead of relying on religious ideas that blind them to the solutions to the very problems they pray for in vain. And even for the secular intellectuals out there, who end up functioning like useful idiots for tyrants like Putin, who would imprison them if they ever criticized Putin the way they criticized the West and the United States if they lived in Russia. For people who have made millions of dollars criticizing the very capitalism that has made them wealthy, I wish those useful idiots would finally be the true foreign policy realists they claim to be and realize that sometimes you have to fight for peace, especially against the Prigozhin's of the world that will kill you if you don't kill them first. If I got anything wrong in this video, please let me know in the comments below. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell for upcoming videos, and check out the links below for my original art and merchandise. And thanks for watching.